let's take a look at an idea that deals with light, things like x-rays, gamma rays, radio waves, uh, TV waves, microwaves, all of these things that are, have several things actually quite common. First of all, they separate themselves from things like sound waves and pond waves because they don't require a medium to transfer through. If you look at the light from the sun, the sun uh, 150 million kilometers away, the light will travel in eight minutes. And in addition to that, there's no medium between there. Now when I use that word, no medium to transfer through, there's no air, there's nothing there, it's considered as a vacuum. Well, they have one idea uniformly within them, these types of waves that I've talked about, and they're called electromagnetic radiation. They have an electrical component, they have a magnetic component, and they're able to permeate through space. Now, they all travel at exactly the same speed, and that's really critical. The speed of light in a vacuum is 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Now, that's constant. It is in a vacuum. It does slow down when it enters the atmosphere. It slows down even further when it enters water. One of the reasons why we see the uh, bending of light, uh, what we call refraction. It's a reason why, for instance, you can look inside a glass of, of uh, water that's got an object inside it. It doesn't look straight, or it looks like in a corner of an aquarium you can see the fish in two places. So, the, the um, refraction of light is a function of the change of speed of the light as it enters another medium coming in from a vacuum or coming in from air to, to a liquid, etc. Now, this is important, the speed of light, because we find a relationship within the waves of light that is different, but that one is constant. Let's take a look at some of the relationships of waves that are different from each other. Let's look at the frequency of a wave and the wavelength. Now let's first of all start with the wavelength. If I look at a wave, any given wave, the distance between two crests from here to there is defined as the wavelength. Now we use the Greek letter lambda to indicate wavelength. Now the wavelength um, for different waves varies and that's one of the things that gives us the differences in light. For instance, red light has a longer wavelength than does blue light. X-rays have a very, very short wavelength. Radio waves have a very long wavelength. Now, uh, for instance, if you're familiar with your radio stations, uh, your favorite radio station, whatever it be, um, that's the thing that defines the difference in FM radio stations. Well, let's go back and uh, take a look at frequency then compared to wavelength. Frequency is how often a wave passes a given point per second. Now, if I were to have a given uh, fixed point right here, and as this wave is translating itself in that direction, it would pass that. It would cycle past this given point so many times per second. Now, keep in mind that wave, that wave is traveling at uh, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So that frequency is going to be very high. But if I were to close those wavelengths together closer, then I think you can see that the frequency would be higher with a shorter wavelength because the two waves would be traveling still at the same speed, but as they travel uh, at the same speed, if the waves are shorter, they're going to um, cycle through a lot faster. So you have a higher frequency. So there's a relationship there that the shorter the wavelength, the higher the frequency. And we can see that mathematically if I write that equation on the board. All right, our relationship between frequency and wavelength is identified here. C is equal to F lambda. Now there are a lot of times we use a different uh, letter in there. We'll use the Greek letter U. Just like that, kind of like a generation of a V and a U together, but it has a uh, um, slash on the upper side, like this. Now, if I look at those letters, that represents your frequency. If I look at those letters, that represents the wavelength. 
And if I look at that letter, that's the speed. Okay? So since speed is fixed, the speed of light is fixed, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, we see that being the constant, those two are the variables in this equation. And I think you can see, if you take the frequency and increase the frequency, then you must decrease the wavelength. There's your relationship we talked about a moment ago. Higher frequency are a result of shorter wavelengths. Now, if I look at a chart that has the frequency posted against the wavelength, then I'm able to actually recognize that relationship. Radio waves have very long wavelengths and low frequencies. Gamma rays, the most deadly of the bunch, have very short wavelengths and very high frequencies. Now let's look at the relationship that we have within frequency and wavelength and how we can actually, we, we keep talking about how damaging certain waves are. Gamma rays are extremely deadly. Well, the question is why? What in the relationship of frequency or wavelength actually causes that damaging effect of the waves? And it comes to a relationship of energy and how the energy is associated. A man named Max Planck came up with a relationship where he said that the energy associated with a photon of light, now if you recall that a photon of light is a small bundle of light, is equal to the constant, he called Planck's constant, multiplied by the frequency, like that. Now, this constant has a numerical value. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But I think you can see then, since that's an output, that's an input, and that's a constant. As I increase the frequency, I increase the energy. So when I go from low frequencies of radio waves with a small amount of energy, then I see a high frequency of gamma rays, I see a high energy associated. So the energy is directly proportional to the frequency of the light that's associated. Let's try a couple of problems with this one. 